My friend Tom, who's a consultant with large corporate organisations, he introduced me to his editor because she had said to him they were looking for a private landlord to talk about the building of a portfolio from the first property. So I, as what I've always termed the accidental landlord, because I bought a house when I was living and working in London in my late 20s, and then as I moved out of London, I rented the rooms. I rented one room to help cover my mortgage costs and I rented a second. Eventually I moved out of London and rented that house to one family and through an agency started to find other tenants when each family moved on after two or three years. Hence the term accidental landlord. But what I did is I refinanced that house several times and bought other properties in provincial towns outside of London where I was living and working at the time. It was a straightforward process uh, and that first book called Buying to Rent was the story of building a portfolio of about a dozen houses over a period of four years. Um, it was something I enjoyed and that was my first experience of writing a how-to book or a book about how you approach something new. Um, same way there are certain approaches that my friends who also write non-fiction they will use and they find really helpful and I will use a system that I'm um, I will use a system that I'm really comfortable with so when somebody says oh I want to write a book but I don't know what to do my first response is to say to them look here is a simple outline follow this and commit time to it every day for a month and if you can't do that then don't write the book but if you feel you can put time and energy into developing and designing the story that you want to write, then I believe that the way you will proceed will be successful and you will have the outcome of a good first draft book. I talk today about how many drafts are necessary because that's a personal decision. I only produce two copies and then I do a third edit by hand and then I send it off to my colleague who helps me with the formatting of the books and he will do an overview which is effectively the first time an outsider sees the manuscript um, and that will result in maybe a couple of dozen changes that I will make and then the book will get formatted and sent off for publication as a digital product. Most of my books are available digitally or like the ones behind me on the on the shelf as physical copies. People have different processes for reading I, for example, have an Amazon Kindle and I love it, but I still but I still have a house that's full of physical books. I've always loved the, the touch of a book, the smell of a book, whether it's a new book or a book that I find um, having a look around in a secondhand bookshop or on a market store. I still like physical books as well as the fact that I can carry several hundred books on a digital obviously you can carry thousands but I might have probably 180 books on my Kindle but I tend to use those for research when I don't have a copy of something in my physical library at home I will go out and, and download a copy so in choosing to bring a book to market you first have to write it in order to write it you need to think what the encompassing theme is for that book then you think of 10 or 12 core issues that somebody wants to know about your subject and you think of three or four sub themes within each of those chapters if for example you have a 10 chapter book with four themes you are very comprehensively covering that you are very comprehensively covering that topic with 40 sections each of those preceded by a how do I or what is the best way to with questions and you then answer those questions and as you answer the questions from your own knowledge or from research if it's a new project or a new area of learning that you are keen to produce a book on you are populating the content of your book that's an easy way forward it's a very simple way forward and it's difficult to argue with the logic of writing a book in that manner you don't need to start at the beginning 
you can start and fill in all the sections where you feel you have good strong knowledge and experience already then you can go out to friends and colleagues and industry specialists that you know and get their quotes get their information uh, gather some perspective on a, a theme where your own knowledge is a little weak and add the value that comes from another person's ideas and opinions so back to the idea of writing and crafting a book you need to have a plan which i think is fairly straightforward and as a non-fiction writer remember that's my skill set as a non-fiction writer i look at the theme that i want to address i look at whether i want maybe 10 or 12 core topics and those become my chapter headings and then with each of those chapters i will think about three or possibly four ideas that i want to drill down into to get more detail uh, for that to get more detail for that particular book um, and that's a simple process i can normally plan a book on a large sheet of a3 paper and that's my first visual idea of what the content of that book will become so i hope you find that useful any ideas you've got or any any questions by all means shoot me a message here